All right, so welcome to part two with Pastor David Rocha. Pastor, uh, I was asking the question in part one, um, kind of leaving a cliffhanger and right yeah. here, go ahead and make the ends meet. One, why, um, I'm sorry, uh, what do you think about studying these other books that were left out or taken out of the Bible? Um, do you think there's uh, some malice to it or, or um, rebellious to it? Or is there, is there anything wrong in your eyes? Yeah, I think there's a misconception. Um, there's a lot of books that claim to be extra biblical books that were never in the Bible. Um, they never were. For instance, there's a book of Thomas. There's a book of Mary. There's a book of Mary Magdalene. There's all kinds of books that are out there that... Bell and the um, Dragon... Yeah, there's yeah. now now the ones that are in the Catholic Bible, that's a whole different thing. Um, I don't really know too much about them. They were never taken out of the Bible, but I believe those are just added to the Catholic Bible. But as far as some of these other books, they were never part of the Bible. Matter of fact, it was proven that they were written way later. Um, a lot of people might say, how can you prove that? Well, it's, it's real easy. I'll, I'll put it like this. Um, the English of Imagine if you found a letter from 100 years ago. You would know that if somebody didn't write it yesterday, just by the words they use, even though it was English. Let's go back 400 years ago. If you found a letter in English, it would sound like a King James Bible, there's and therefores and thou's and, you know. Right. Why is thou watching Netflix? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we, we would know if somebody said, hey, this letter was written yesterday in Long Beach. You would say, uh, no, it's not. That's not the English we speak. So a thousand years from now, somebody would be able to date a letter from 2021 or 1921 or 1621, even though all three would be in English. No, if somebody is an English major, they would or a historian, they would understand there was different time periods. I say that to say that a lot of these letters that claim to be from the Bible or claim to be from the Apostle Thomas or Mary, the mother of Jesus, um, even because they're in Greek, people, us, us dummies that don't know Greek would know mm -hmm. the difference. But a Greek historian would say this was not written in the time of Jesus. The Greek words they use are more contemporary or, or vice versa. So they can date letters by the Greek words they use. So a lot of these extra biblical books that claim to be from the time of Jesus were actually fakes. They were imposters written, a lot of them four, five, eight hundred years later after Jesus. A lot of the books in the Old Testament were written in the time of Jesus. The, for instance, Paul wrote Ephesians only 30 years after the crucifixion. So people that walked with Jesus were still alive. It, it could be confirmed, you know, by the people that were living. So there's a lot of books out there that claim to be from the Bible. Now, the book of Enoch, that's an interesting one. The book of Enoch was never in the Bible, but the Jewish people do consider that an important book. So if anyone would ask me, okay, out of all these books, which one is the one most respected? I would probably say the book of Enoch, but it was never taken out of the Bible, but it's probably the most respected from the Jewish culture. And that's important because the Bible comes from Israel, you know, so... They recognize that book as uh, important. Yeah, and that that like I said, that's that's probably the most popular one that um, that I hear, the Book of Enoch. But there are other books. But um, yeah, no, I, I you're dropping good stuff right here. A lot of the stuff I didn't really know. Hang on, let me clear this stuff out. Yeah, so I think one question you asked me as we left off in part one is why do why do I think some of it is growing? Why do people are reading that stuff? And again, it goes back to human nature. Humans always want to know a little more than the next guy. That's why conspiracy theories oh, yeah. are so huge. Uh -huh. Everybody wants the insight. Everybody wants to know something different. Like if I bring up anything, if I bring up uh, the virus or the presidency or some school shooting or somebody always claims to know something more, you know, mm -hmm. and I think same thing with the Bible. There's so many people that study these extra biblical Bibles, but don't read the Bible themselves, or they read the Bible and they don't really like what it says. They don't want to live by it. 
So it's easier for them to discount the Bible and say, you know what? These are for the masses. These are for, put together to control. And I like the book of Thomas or I like the book because it pertains to them more. You know, they just they're just rebellious and they don't want to accept it. You know, do, do you think there's been any tampering with the Bible? Pastor, um, no, it's been it's been gone down with different hands. It's been through different hands. Do you think there's yeah. been any tampering with the Bible? Man, yeah. I don't believe that. Um, that is an old argument that was actually mm -hmm. proven wrong in the 40s. The reason I say that is because you got to think about it. Throughout all of history, people have been saying, "Well, King James tampered with it," or other people tampered with it. And when people say that, it, it's 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 out of a not knowing. It's, a, it's out of a not knowing. Uh, for instance, um, there were many manuscripts written. We don't have the original Bible because there was no paper back then. I've, I've, I've talked, I've debated with the Muslim that tells me, well, we have the original Quran. And I said, well, yeah, of course, because when the Quran was written, paper was invented already. When the Bible was written, they wrote on something else that dissolved over time. It, it, it didn't last. I said, so you can't really argue with me. That's like somebody telling me, well, I can prove it because it's on my phone and all you got is Polaroids, wow. you know? So right. um, it, it's not a real argument, but, you know, um, back to the what you were saying is um, there's a thing called the Dead Sea Scrolls. And they found these scrolls in a cave in Israel. And, and this was in the 40s. I want to say 47, 49. A lot of people that have believed that the Bible has been tampered with because they realize these scrolls dated back to the time of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people that have claimed that the Bible's tampered with, they said, now we can shut the mouths of these Bible-believing Christians once we got the proof now and we're going to show. So they had to be really careful. These Dead Sea Scrolls are in Israel at a museum. Sometimes they travel and bring fragments of it to different museums in the United States and around the world. But they took years to open these things up. There was many, several hundreds of scrolls written originally. And they said, we're gonna for sure show that in all this time, for sure the Bible's been tampered with. You know what they came up with? Nothing. Mm. The only, there was a couple inconsistencies with a couple names, the way the names of people were written but every single book in the Bible is there word for word. So that is an old argument that people can't argue anymore. You know, another thing is, um, for instance, if I uh, remember how we were talking earlier in part one, that the Bible was in Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Okay. So let's say you wrote a book and you called it Cholo Trucker, <laughs> right? And, uh, and you passed it out. You passed it to somebody in Spain, somebody in Nigeria, somebody in Japan, somebody in Russia, somebody in Switzerland, somebody in Australia. And you said, listen, make this in your language and make as many copies as possible. So then let's say um, the one in Russia one had his own agenda and wanted to change your letter. So, but he doesn't, realize or does maybe there's 300 of your letters all over the world so the russian decides to change it up so he can manipulate the people in russia well that would very quickly um be found out especially in our time now right because yes, you no. would say wait a second we got 300 other languages that all match but the russian <laughs> one is off so if somebody changed the bible somewhere along the time in history there's thousands of manuscripts out there that would disprove that one. What's interesting is there are over 33,000 manuscripts that are, like I said, the original Bible isn't there because paper wasn't invented. Mm -hmm. But there's like 33,000 manuscripts found in different languages, different continents, in different cities, and they all match. So to change the Bible would be impossible because you'd have to change every manuscript. And, and that's just an impossibility. Got you. Okay. Pastor, um, why church on Sundays? Um, my understanding is it should have been Sabbath. 
which is uh, Saturdays. Now, yeah. I want to go ahead and say I go to church on Saturday. Now, I want to make it clear I do not go to church on Saturday because I'm holding true to going to church on the Sabbath. That's not why I go to church on Saturday. I actually, you know, I'll, I'll pull my own covers. I go to church on Saturday because to me, it's more convenient. That's really yeah. why I go to church on Saturday. It's not to, you know, because I'm trying to think that I'm better than somebody else. And, oh, man, I'm sticking true to the word. No, I'm going to be real with it. I go to church on Saturday because it's more convenient for me. Yeah. Um, why, why, why church on Sunday? Now, I'll go ahead and throw out there what I heard. And I heard this on YouTube, okay, that it was the Catholic Church that switched it to Sunday many moons ago. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, I actually don't remember. This is actually a few years ago. Well, maybe about two years ago that I heard this. Um, I don't know it to be true. I'm just saying what I heard. But why why church on, on Sunday if it uh, apparently is supposed to be the Sabbath? Yeah, from from obviously um this is not something I studied extensively, but mm -hmm. I, I will share with what I think is I think that. Again, I, I do know that it's a half truth when you say the Roman Catholic Church started church on Sunday. It mm -hmm. is a truth, but it goes oh. deeper than that. The Catholic Church has, our modern day calendar is the Gregorian calendar. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, seven day week mm -hmm. split into, you know, January, February. That is a Catholic, um, they came up with the calendar that we still go by. So it's not like they made that calendar up in order so you can go to church on Sunday. It's just the way they did the calendar, um, they did the seventh day, which is a Sunday, as a day of rest. You know, So that's, that's why they did that. Now, when people say we should go to church on the Sabbath, um, what is the Sabbath? Because I, uh, um, here's the thing a lot of people don't know, is that the Jewish calendar to this day, doesn't match our calendar. Okay. The Jewish Sabbath is not necessarily our Saturday. Mm -hmm. Their days are different. Their years are different. You realize that the Jewish reject our calendar because our calendar says it's been 2,021 years since Christ. Israel don't believe in Christ. Right. So we're not going to go by that calendar. You know, so their calendar, their days, their months are completely different than ours. So for us to say, um, it, you know, we need to have service on, on Saturday, it, it doesn't match to the original Sabbath of the, of the Jewish, and they're the ones that started the Sabbath. Well, God, you know, started the Sabbath with them. That's one thing, is that we got to be really careful because the calendars don't match. Another thing is, Sunday is no more holy than any day. I'll, I'll have service. And in prison, we have service every day. So I don't hold to the truth that Sunday is supposed to be for church. Um, I think that we have fell into um, traditionally. That's the day most people have off of work. Why? Because of the Gregorian calendar. You know, and it's like it's what would what would I prove by saying, you know what, I reject having church on Sunday. I'm going to do it on Mondays. I'm going to do it on Monday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, guess what? Most people are at work. Right. You know, so um, I don't adhere that Sunday is any more special than any other day. It's, it's just the day most people are able to come. I don't consider Sunday to be any holier than any other day. I do believe that there's a lot of paganism involved because when the Roman Catholic Church, when Rome took over the Catholic Church, I do want to separate that because Catholic just means universal. That's mm -hmm. all it means. You know, so when, when Christianity began to grow and grow and grow, it was called the universal church, which in that language was Catholic. But when Rome 200, is it 300 years later, 313 years later, Constantine was an emperor of Rome. He decided to hijack Christianity. He hijacked the Catholic Church, and the government took over that religion. And the government, you know, was having issues because they had pagans on one side and Christians on the other. So he he was going to lose his emperorship. So the best thing he can do was hijack Christianity, and the holidays of the pagans 
intermingle them with the holidays of the Christians. And that's where we get a lot of this weird paganism that goes on. You know, our days of the, of the week are named after pagan gods. Sunday is a worship to worship the sun. So they took a little bit of Christianity, but gave enough to the pagans to make them happy. Wednesday is, that, is named after Woden, the god Woden. Uh, Saturday is after the god Saturn. Our, um, our months, August is to venerate the Augustus. You know what I mean? So it, it, there's so much paganism in our everyday world. Our calendar, our money, our money has a pyramid with the all-seeing eye on it. And it says, in all God we trust. Well, which God are they trusting in? You know, we wear Nike shoes. Nike is a Greek God. We drink Starbucks with the Greek goddess on it. So paganism is intermingled in everything. You know, so I, I say, I'm not getting away from the question, but, you know, I know some people are saying that we shouldn't have church on Sunday, so we should have it on Saturday. So instead of the sun God, we're worshiping the Saturn God. You know what I mean? So it's like, to me, I don't, no, no day is holy. I have church on Sunday only because people are not working for the most part, but I'll have church every day. Right. You know? yeah. 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 And and that's that's kind of the, the best argument that I have heard is like, hey, you know what? You could worship any day. Do you believe in a day of rest, Pastor? Um, the Bible talks about a day of rest. I find it interesting that for me, the Bible is... Everything, you know, completeness, the, 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 in the beginning, in Adam and Eve, he said the seventh day, this is the day of rest. You know, um, obviously God don't need a rest. So he did that as an example for us that we need to rest mm -hmm. because he made us, he knows what we're like, you know, and what, regardless, you know, I have some people that don't come to church because they work through the weekend, but their day off is Tuesday and Wednesday. Mm -hmm. That's their day of rest. Because God knows that we get tired, we get wore out, you know what I mean? So, but also I think in the bigger picture, um, Jesus coming is the rest. We rest in him. So it's not just a certain day. It's all day, 24-7, that I rest in Christ because he completed the work. He completed creation in seven days. He created, he, he, and, and he completed salvation on the cross so you and I can rest in him. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't, I don't mind, you know, if you want to take a day of rest. I, I, you know, like you said, as humans, we do get tired and all, and uh, yeah. when uh, life is really getting you moving, a day of rest sounds good. It's the issue that I have when people, all people want to do is just rest and not <laughs> get up and get moving. That that's when yeah. I that's when I I'm, yeah. I'm like oh man look at this man they're they're yeah. taking this to another level. But Pastor, you're saying something a little earlier, um, and you brought up uh, holidays as well. Yeah. Um, let's talk about holidays. Okay. Christmas, Easter, yeah. birthdays, all these things. There's some people that think that none of these things should be celebrated. Um, maybe some of them, maybe none of them. Um, yeah. I guess we'll, we'll, we'll go with, uh, with Christmas, you know, it's, it's kind of a universal holiday. Um, very little people say Merry Christmas anymore. It's more just happy holidays. Yeah. Um, where do you stand with, uh, Christmas? Me and myself, I'm a big Christmas freak. Uh, I love the Christmas season. I love, you know, just Christmas time. It's just, a it, to me, it's, when they say it's the most wonderful time of the year for me, it really truly is. You know, I'm that yeah. Clark Griswold guy that uh, just <laughs> loves. I just love the feeling and the season of just Christmas. But let, let's start with, with with that, Pastor. Where do you stand on uh, on Christmas? I mean, I, I love Christmas. Christmas has always represented family to me. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, as a kid, I have great memories of gifts. As an adult, I have great memories of giving my children gifts and, and just seeing them, their little faces light up. You know, um, it's, it's a time to to uh, let people know about Jesus. I don't believe Jesus was born on the 25th. Um, it's highly unlikely he was. Um, but again, you know, he was born. And mm -hmm. I think it's a time that where the whole world recognizes that, you know. Um, it, 
it'd be nice, man, to know that after I die, 100 years after me, maybe they don't forget my family, you know, my grandkids and great grandkids don't remember the day I was born, but it'd be nice to be remembered, you know, to say, you know what, Grandpa, Grandpa David, you know, we don't remember his birthday, but you know what, he was a great man, you know, and let's all get together on, on June 5th, you know, and I think that's a beautiful thing, you know, it's a beautiful thing for the world to, to honor Jesus, um, regardless of when he was born, you know, um, do I, will I argue with people about holidays? No, I'm not, because it's not biblical. You know, he doesn't say to celebrate Easter or Christmas or anything like that. The only thing he does say to do is communion, do this in remembrance of me, you know, but other than that, um, it's, it's traditional, you know, now Jesus talks against tradition, but here's the thing people don't get is he's talking about traditions that hinder you from coming to God. You know, I don't see a hindrance in getting together and exchanging gifts or having some tamales or whatever with your family. I think that's a beautiful thing. It creates memories. You know, I don't think there's nothing wrong with traditions as long as it doesn't get in the way of God. For instance, when I was raising my son, every Monday he knew that at Wingstop, wings are 50% off. So every Monday he'd get off of school and he'd be like, Dad, it's Monday. And that became our little tradition right nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that man i look back now now he's he's 20 years old and i look back and his little face and how happy he would get when i picked him up from school because he knew it was wing day you know and mm -hmm. that became it was just me and him our tradition that didn't get in the way for me and god that was a beautiful moment that i had to build with my son i see christmas in the same way there's beautiful traditions that we have when Jesus speaks against traditions, he's not talking about those beautiful moments. He's talking about those traditions that are a hindrance to God. I don't see Christmas as a hindrance unless you're leaving Jesus out of it, unless you're making it all about Santa or whatever. I mean, I get little kids, I get it, you know? And, and even then people have brought me the argument of Santa. I'm like, you do know St. Nick was a, a real person, right? You do know he was a man that in his town, he really did give gifts. Yeah, later on, the Coke company put them in a red suit to match their Coke, their Coke thing. But there really was a man that loved to make gifts. And he saw the impoverished in his town and he would make little gifts in his shop and give them out. What's wrong with that? Right. You know, the right. real St. Nick was a believer of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's a real historical person. So even then, I'm just like, I don't mind Santa either. Just put him in his place that he kneels to Jesus too. You know? The real Santa, or the, the real, they called him Santa later, but the real Saint Nick mm. would, would turn in his grave if he knew that people exalted him above Jesus. Because he was right. a Christian. He yeah. was a Christian, you know? So I, I don't know, I agree with you, man. I love Christmas time. Yeah, and, and for anybody who, uh, who wants to see the real Santa Claus today, they're called truckers. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Hey, we're on our sled all year long, you know, <laughs> take, taking uh, taking all the goodies, man. So, no, yeah. that's 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 good right there, Pastor. What about uh, birthdays for one that says, hey, you're not supposed to um, exalt somebody above anybody else. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's the whole, uh, I, I, I got that whole stink on me about that I don't celebrate birthdays and all. But what, <laughs> what, 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 what about birthdays, celebrating birthdays? one's life instead of uh you know you're, you're basically getting a person a human and putting them up on a pedestal for that day uh not so much in a day of worshiping them but that it's all about them yeah where do you stand on that pastor i don't i don't see nothing wrong with it but i will say it's kind of weird when adults make something big of their birthday you know i think it's weird um children i think it's 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 fun. It's a, it's a landmark, you know, it's a landmark of maturity. It's a landmark it is to, I think it's, it's a beautiful thing to, but when people start making, I see people make it now beyond their birthday. Now it's a birthday week, their birthday month. Yes. That that's ridiculous to me. You celebrating, know, celebrating their half birthdays. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't, yes. I don't think it's, I don't think like God's going to send you to hell for it, but 
I think it's a little just silly. You know what I mean? Um, I think it's silly. I, I think it's beautiful to, you know, the Bible says that when Jesus was 12, so obviously they knew his age. Mm. So obviously there was some kind of something uh, recognizing his age. You know, I, I think it's nice to have, um, to, you know, celebrate like how long I've been married with my wife mm -hmm. or her birthday for me to recognize, you know, like, hey, you know, but we don't make a big old elaborate party. I take her to dinner. We have a nice time, you know, nothing wrong with that. It's just when people go overboard and it just, it's funny to me, I don't think it's anti-God or nothing. I just think it's a little funny. Yeah, well, my anniversary is Christmas Day. We actually got married on Christmas Day, so. Oh wow! Yeah, we we uh, we spend our anniversary in our uh, beyond because you know uh, the traditional you know Mexican family we we celebrate Christmas Eve, um, yeah. and Christmas Day is actually our anniversary, and we just spend it eating all the leftovers, all the leftover pozole, tamales in our pajamas, just watching Christmas movies. Yeah. That's it. Is that there couldn't be anything better? National so, Lampoon's um, Christmas Vacation. Oh, I love that movie. That's a that's always a classic. That's always a classic. Home Alone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? That's that's her favorite uh, Christmas movie. Yeah. Uh, Home Alone is actually her her favorite Christmas movie. I laugh Pastor. every time. I know what's gonna happen, and I still laugh. You know what, Pastor? That that is just like her. That is just like her. You know, she loves the movie Tommy Boy. I don't know how many times she's watched it. Yeah, she still laughs. I was like, "Oh, I, yeah, you." I it's if you haven't seen the movie in a long time, I get it. You know, not to say that you forgot what happened, but you're seeing it again, and you're just kind of just reminded, like, "Hey, yeah, that is kind of funny." I'm laughing, but yeah. she's seen it so many times, and it's like if she watched it today, she's laughing. She watches it tomorrow, she's laughing the same. I'm like, I, okay. All right, you know, I, I I guess so. Hey, as long as you're enjoying it, I guess yeah. you know. But um, Pastor, I got so many more questions for you, Pastor. I I I, I, I honestly, we can just go on for hours and hours and hours. I, I just are, love having you know these. Are you happy with the answers I'm giving you, though? Am I? Yes, okay. yes, I am. No, the, this is I, and you know um. I guess I guess we 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 could uh, talk on this. Is that uh, you know um, the answers that you're giving, Pastor? I mean, you're a very well educated man, you know, and uh, I I do take what you're saying, and I'm like, wow, you know, this coming from a from a very well educated man, a righteous man, and all. Um, I'm sure there's people that might watch this and and disagree. Yeah. And say like, no, nah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Man, that's okay. That's gonna yeah. happen. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're we're all human beings here. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's it's not really to um try to push some sort of indoctrination out there or anything like that. But yeah, I mean there's there's people that I have conversations with and they're very well educated, you know, to to the best of their ability. That's yeah. way a completely different way. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, okay, you know, there you go. You know, it's 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 just life. You know, life has a yeah. lot of different moving parts. And, and uh, you know, um, religion has become a subject. It's, it's no longer a, a belief. It's now up for debate. It's up for all this kind of stuff where it's like, I, I I don't know. I don't I don't like to look at it that way. And and um I don't I don't really like to say that I'm religious, uh, because again, it's now looked at as a subject. It's now yeah. looked at as oh, it's up for debate. Well, it's not up for debate, it's it's a belief, it's yeah. it's a relationship with God. It's not uh something that's you know debatable. You can definitely have a conversation, but it's it's faith based. Um, that's my thoughts, my beliefs in it. Yeah. So when it's like, hey, come on, let's uh, let's talk about is there a real God? I can't, I can't, I can't physically, you know, get something and say, here, see, touch this. That means God 
it, yeah. it's, it's real. It's it's a belief. It's a faith. It's faith. It's belief to to it. There's no. I can go ahead and and um, go ahead and kind of give you examples, but then maybe you might have some sort of uh, scientific examples to to kind of say like, well, this is happening because of that, yeah. you know, or this or that or what have you. And and picking up the Bible and reading it just like any other book is somebody that's telling you something in, in, in course of history. So how can you really debate it when there's really nothing that's actual tangible to say, you know, um, I'm just trying to grab something here to just kind of show you, Hey, what time it is. And that is a true fact Yeah, yeah. Um, that that's not there. It's, 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 it's faith based. So, um, you know, that's just my kind of thoughts on it, pastor. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. You know what? I, I remember um, when I was in Terminal Island, I had a a crip, a Jewish guy, and a Jehovah Witness in our little section there. Interesting conversations, and uh, ultimately, uh, no, did I say it? No, not Jehovah Witness, a Muslim. Okay. And uh, we have great conversations, very respectful. In prison, man, you can't be arguing stuff. You know, you you got to be very respectful, and that way you'll get respect back. Right. And uh, even though we differed in our beliefs. And uh, I remember talking to the Muslim guy, real nice guy, man, really nice guy. And uh, we would bust spreads together and whatnot. And one day we were talking about this. And he says, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in Christianity. I believe in Islam. And I said, well, I believe the opposite of you. And he started talking. He's the one that said, well, they don't even have the original Bible. And that's that's why I told him that. I said, well, that's not fair because paper was invented when Muhammad wrote the Quran. You know, and we went back and forth. And I said, you know, you know, listen, I don't want to debate. I don't want to ever argue with you. I said, I like you as a person. You're, you're always very respectful. You're very clean in your area. You know, and that's a, that's a big deal in prison because it was a, a dorm living. And I told them, can we say this? Neither of us were there when the Quran or the Bible were written. Can we both agree to that? He's like, yeah, I can agree to that. I said, so we can argue to her black and blue, but we can't prove right. nothing. Right. And he goes, okay, right. I, I see what you're, I, I agree with you. I said, but mm -hmm. I said, how has your life changed? Because I will tell you how my life has changed. I said that, I can't speak on. I can't speak on the fact that I was a gang member, a drug dealer, uh, all of it. And I surrendered my life to the Lord and he changed me like that. I said that nobody can argue with me. I'm not, I'm not portraying to be a Christian. It's not a facade. It's not me trying to act a certain way, but deep down I'm wicked and I'm still thinking and feeling this way. I said, God did something to my heart. He changed me. I said, I had hate for Southsiders. I said, and now I don't feel hate. Matter of fact, I, I don't feel nothing. I, I feel nothing but wanting to reach them for the Lord. I, I, I said, how long have you seen me here in Terminal Island? You see me talk to Southsiders. I said, I, I'll, I'll give them a soup if they need a soup, and they'll give me a soup if I need a soup. And back and forth, I said, because God healed me of that. I said, that... I can tell you factually, I might not have been there when the Bible was written, but I can tell you right now today what Jesus did for me. And he can do it for you too, I told him. And he just stayed real quiet because he would pray like four times or five times or six times a day and things like that. And I said, you know, I said, man, I respect that. I respect that. I said, because most Christians won't even pray once a day. <laughs> you know, I said, I respect yeah. that. I yeah. said, but, but has your heart changed has god spoken to you and he's like you know what i'll be honest with you no i said well you can just you know leave that right there let that soak in your mind i said because god has brought a change in my life i said to me that's the proof that i needed and that's yeah, yeah. man pastor and man i definitely want to get into a lot of this stuff with you and even in my life you know because uh my life is uh I, 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 I look at it and there's so many things that I've heard you say in the daily devotionals as well. And I'm like, wow, you know what? He's speaking to me right now. 
And there's so much pastor. There's so much. I mean, and we just scratched the surface in these just two parts, but definitely pastor. I want to bring you back on and have way more conversations of, of so many different things, pastor. It's always a pleasure talking to you and, 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 uh, watching you and sharing on the daily devotional. So uh, anything else, Pastor, before we get out of here? There you go. There you go. And like it's I said, I have, I have not yeah. read that book, but I have read this one. And he paints, Pastor David paints the picture. You're watching it while you're reading it. Yeah, so this one's called Who Are You? Identity in Christ. And it's on Amazon. And I always forget to, to say this when I talk with people is I make my living by painting. You knew that, right? Yeah. You're a painter. Yes. Yeah. I paint, I paint landscapes and I do have an Instagram. I always forget to even mention it, but it's called David Rocha art, my name and the word art. And you can see all the artwork. I, I was, uh, I used to be in two galleries. Now I'm on one. Um, because the other one was way up in the foothills. They're having issues. There's no tourism going on because of COVID and all that. So I took all my art out. But I do have a section in the church where it's all my art. And there's a gallery here in Stockton. But I'm shipping paintings all the time. So if there's something you see on David Rocha Art on Instagram, that would really bless us. I'm not on payroll at the church. I make my living with books and with paintings and things like that. You know, and um, so... You know, if there's somebody interested in some of the art I have, that would be a true blessing for my wife and I. Do you take uh, requests? I mean, if, if I can, if I contact you and I'm like, hey, can you paint me this or sometimes that? I, sometimes I do. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. All right, Pastor. Uh, that it? Any last words, Pastor, to the people watching? Shout out to everybody in the chat that's on that's there. It. But... Uh, we're definitely, yeah. I'm definitely going to have Pastor David Rocha come back on here if I have to bribe him, force him, whatever it is. <laughs> but uh, we'll definitely have you back on, Pastor. Like I said, it's always a pleasure having you on. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, I, I'll go ahead and say this, Pastor. Um, one time somebody asked me, they said, hey, who... Who's one of your role models? Who's somebody you look up to? And I didn't have an answer because I, I didn't know. But I will say, you know, just in this recent time, I could name you. Wow. I could definitely name you. So um, for whatever that's worth, Pastor. That's I worth a want, lot. I just want that's you to know that. And um Shout outs to uh, Sharon as well. Give her my best, Pastor. And that's where we're going to go ahead. And that's where we're going to end it, Familia, for now, because I'll definitely have them back on. As always, Familia, live your life like you're on the road. Be aware of your surroundings and always keep a safe distance. Blood makes you live. But loyalty makes you family. Until next time, this is Ed the Total Trucker with Pastor David Rocha. Over and out.